Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining our webinar today. Uh, my name is Albina. I'm from Kazakhstan. Currently, it's evening in Almaty, where I'm based. Uh, and I love, I think, um, our Central Asian food, so which is kind of called, um, okay, anything my mom cooks. <laughs> So we usually cook from rice, dough, but we don't eat spicy. So kind of European food. Mm -hmm. So today um, we are uh, joined by our speakers and also my colleagues, my amazing co-champion of this community of practice, Yolanda. Hi. <laughs> yeah, and me. This is us. Uh, and while, uh, please also, uh, while I'm talking, you can just introduce yourself in chat. It's always good to read about um, people who join our events from different parts of the world. Uh, next slide, please. So today um, we have our um, kind of concluding webinar for this year, uh, which uh, where we talk about, continue talking about addressing climate issues and also connecting with higher education institutions perspectives globally. So today we have interesting speakers because we are tapping into the post-Soviet uh, region and we are uh, bringing two speakers uh, from Kazakhstan and Kyrgyz Republic from Central Asia, I would say. And it was hard because uh, addressing climate issues from university and youth perspectives like youth activism is just starting in our region in Central Asia, so it was hard to find speakers, but it doesn't mean they don't exist, as I told my colleagues before. So for us, for everyone who are attending today or watching this recording, it's a great opportunity to learn about new context of developing countries, to see new examples, especially from youth perspectives how youth are addressing climate issues uh, at the higher education, within higher education setting. We will have chance to discuss, to ask questions together. Also, we will talk about what we have accomplished this year. As I said, we have done series of webinars and some uh, learning events this year. And also we will talk about our uh, final community of practice metrics, which is mapping and profiling document, which we put together. And we are trying to create kind of database that shows how higher education globally are putting, um, addressing climate issues in their strategy and also in their teaching and learning approaches. So it's interesting um, mapping metrics that Yolanda will show you and you have a chance to contribute, share your uh, ideas. Next slide, please. Uh, so uh, I'm giving floor to Yolanda so she can uh, recap about what is HEAT I'm talking about all the time, what is community practice we are together in. Yes, thank you, Albina, and, and hello, everyone. Just a quick reminder for um, if you're new to this community of practice, uh, we have been working on issues of climate change this year um, and higher education uh, institutions um, through the Youth Power Learning platform. We have done a lot of work uh, this year. We started in January and we ending um, today, um, actually. But the heat is really to bring people together, people from all kinds of, um, of backgrounds and institutions, so we can talk about the issues of higher education transformation, and in this case, um, climate change. So um, please, um, ask any questions uh, you want, um, share any comments you wanna, uh, you wanna share. We, when we ask questions, when anyone asks questions, we love answers. So don't hesitate to, to post questions and in the chat throughout the, the webinar. Thank you. This is the youthpower.org uh, website. This is where you can engage in discussions, get access to resources, and not only our own community of practice on higher education, but also gender and entrepreneurship. And, and um, you know, the Middle East region has a fantastic community of practice. So it's a very rich platform. So don't hesitate to, um, to go on. Albina, the floor is yours. 
Yes, thank you, Alain. So as you see, we are global community of practice uh, with many members. And also we try to bring different perspectives to include different voices, different ideas, which always um, like diversity brings richness to our discussions, our thinking. So how we frame this topic of addressing climate issues with education uh, setting. And today we have two speakers, as I mentioned before, so you can see their photos. Uh, Sabit from Kazakhstan, he's, um, um, we call this like associate of rector, supporting rector's work at Atra Oil and Gas University in West Kazakhstan, uh, which actually is the key area of our country where oil and gas is produced. And he's also director of the corporate fund Bolashak in Atra region, trying to engage and partner private sector with university programs uh, and also supporting youth uh, activism in his university at, uh, while also being a young person from our country. Uh, she's from Kyrgyz Republic, our neighboring country to Kazakhstan. And as she wrote in a chat, she likes tiramisu. She um, represents um, our Central Asia region because she worked in different uh, countries in the region as an eco-activist, as a student who established eco clubs, who run big events, she will talk about later. And also, she's studying now at her master in um, uh, Kazakh German University, looking at water integrated systems. Uh, so, this is shortly about our amazing speakers, young people from the region. And I think the next slide is um, going. Yeah, we're give, giving floor to Sabit. Just a reminder, each speaker will have uh, 10 minutes for their presentation, telling the story. So we asked them, please tell about how you, as a young person, address this topic. Well, not only as a person working in higher education setting. I think it's always interesting to hear uh, like human stories from the field, as we say, in development. And then there will be time for asking questions to our speakers. So Sabit, floor is yours. Thank you very much, Albina. Hi, everyone. My name is Sabit Mohanov. I'm from Kazakhstan. So if you uh, change to the next slide, please. Mm -hmm. uh, me, myself, I graduated the Ger university in Germany uh, in 2020, but I got to know about the SDGs in 2012 while my education abroad. And the reason why I'm starting with the education abroad, for example, in Europe or in the US, is because I want to make the accent on Bolashak program. So Bolashak program is the Kazakh national uh, scholarship program, which sends the students to different countries and brings them back to Kazakhstan. And once they land back in Kazakhstan, we try to bring everyone together. So the ideas they got outside abroad so that the ideas don't just disappear in the with themselves. So each we try to bring uh, combine their efforts and experience for the benefit of our younger of future of younger generation. So currently I'm employed as a rector's associate at the Atra Oil and Gas University. It's the only specialized university in oil and gas field in Kazakhstan. And the benefit of this university is because it's very close to the industry. Uh, in Atra, we got only two universities. One is a state university for um, which graduates teachers and ours, the technicians for oil and gas industry. And why am I accenting on oil and gas industry? It's because once we start promoting SDGs, of course we need funding and sponsorship. And that's where we get it from from the energy companies. So currently at the Atra Oil and, Ga Oil and Gas University, we've got uh, around 17 Bolashak graduates who have uh, finished their masters or PhDs in US, in UK, in France or China even. And it's very cool to be a part of such international team, I would say. Even though we're all Kazakhs, everyone has their own vision uh, on each topic, and especially on SDGs. If you mind switching on the next slide, please. Um, so what do we do in here? 
I tried to combine all events we've had, not all, but like most important events we've had within the past last year. And our events are huge. Um, as speakers for these events, we bring, we invite the top management of oil and gas university, the top representatives of Kazakh government and of the energy sector, et cetera, et cetera. For example, on the, uh, on this picture to the bottom right, you see the CEOs of two biggest oil and gas companies and Schlumberger of Central Asia. And the reason why we bring them to university, to our university, because uh, the university is exactly the place where we can promote different aspects to the younger generation, especially since we're talking to polluters, I'd say to energy companies, we encourage the younger generation to see what we do have right now and where we are headed. And the, where, the place where we're headed is the, of course the zero net emission. And yeah, the, if you switch the next slide, please. So climate action is huge, exactly. And talking about bringing people together uh, is shown on this picture, on these pictures. We've got different types of conferences, roundtables, discussions, and online meetings like the current one, uh, almost, almost every week on the base of our university. The reason why we do have so many events promoting different SDGs the reason behind this is that not everyone, especially the newbies, the newcomers um, to the university, they don't know much about the SDGs at all. So in the news, in Kazakh news, probably less, even less than 1% of news is uh, about the SDGs. And we especially uh, have, who have lived outside abroad, who know exactly how to promote the SDGs. We try to share our ideas with them and commonly they agree. If you switch to the next slide, please. Mm. And since this is a youth power meeting, um, I brought together different events that we do where we combine the younger generation with the professionals. For example, the first skill trip is exactly the reason to show why we combine energy companies and the US. You see the flags, the three flags uh, they're holding. Well, one is of the Atra Oil and Gas University, but the two of them are sponsors. Who are sponsors? It's not just necessarily a money or a lot of money. For example, for this field trip, the energy companies uh, provided us with uh, some water and car transportation and a guide. A professional geologist who knew exactly about every piece of landscape. So this is kind of partnership. This kind of small partnership is still valuable to us. Um, for example, for teamwork seminars and hackathons, we also invite the best representatives of the industry to share their skills and knowledge with the younger generation. It's way better to learn face-to-face uh, -face from them than just from learning from books or the slides. And of course, we do a lot of masterclasses, coachings, we invite different people uh, to the base of our university to share their ideas. For example, recently, uh, one representative of the UN uh, showed up at, a, at our university. Uh, his name was uh, Justin. And Justin talked to around 100 of our students to promote and promoted the SDGs and the importance of the SDGs and the reason why he joined the UN. I think everyone loved it to hear it exactly from him since. It's not that common that um, foreigners come to our place, to Central Asia, but it's still common. 
and thank you all for listening to me. I think uh, there's no next slides, right? Yeah, that was the, my last slide. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm free if you ask any questions afterwards. So I'm bringing the, giving the floor to Mirren. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Sabit, so much. Uh, I also just wanted to say that um, uh, the university at Rawal and Gas, they do um, own program in sustainable development. Uh, yeah, he, he, Sabi told us before, and they try to engage students to promote sustainable development goals in different ways. So it was very short summary because we have only one hour. But I think uh, in discussion, you can ask Sabit more about uh, their exact um, climate change events. But I'm inviting Mayrim, who will share um, her experience, and it will give us more uh, kind of student perspective. So we heard about university setting in Central Asia. Now we are moving to student. Please, Mary. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm Mary Sitak Matva. I'm a master's student at German Kazakh University, which is located in Almaty, Kazakhstan, uh, where are all students uh, from all over the region uh, of Central Asia. Uh, so I'm uh, currently, I'm doing the master uh, thesis um, about uh, water, uh, integrated water resource management. Um, yeah, uh, by the background, I'm ecologist and uh, climate and water activist in Kyrgyz Republic, but <laughs> also in um, Central Asia. Uh, next. Uh -huh. Yeah. So uh, here we are in, in uh, this photo uh, from uh, 2019 and uh, I, I want to start with the question how this photo uh, turned into the next, into this, <laughs> like uh, as you see here we are uh, a group of uh, like uh, uh, the young people uh, from Kyrgyzstan. So my story begins um, from nine, uh, 2019. Uh, next slide. Uh -huh. Yeah, so here I am. Uh, so my story begins from uh, 2019 uh, when I was just a girl uh, who studies uh, at a uh, like, right, uh, government uh, university at Kyrgyz National Agrarian University, it's, uh, uh, where the, there is no climate agenda, even if there is department, uh, ecological department. So um, I was studying at um, third year uh, of my bachelor, and then I uh, was asked. I I just realized that why the our youth don't uh, know about the climate and uh, climate issues and SDGs and etc. Uh, we don't have any information about the uh, climate. So uh, I decided to uh, establish an eco club, uh, the space for young people to, um, yeah, to raise awareness among uh, young people, uh, especially in uh, among our students uh, at the university, but uh, yeah, but it uh, later it comes to uh, that uh, not in our eco club uh, there is no uh, like uh, there is not only students from my university. There is student. There are students from all over the city that. Uh, the, these people were looking for place, space to speak up or to uh, 
get more information about climate so um, yeah next slide uh, yeah and then um, so we collaborated with um, young uh, people and uh, youth organizations uh, and other university like as you see here in uh, American University University in Central Asia AUCA and Kyrgyzstan and um, help this organization uh, this event I this event is first ever like youth climate forum in Kyrgyzstan so uh, I think there uh, here this is the point when uh, all the climate action were started. So next. Yeah, and then we are realized uh, this, um, a lot of events uh, and working with young people in Kyrgyzstan um, upon awareness raising. And here you can see that um, we uh, go further more and uh, organize the first uh, youth climate uh, dialogues uh, in Kyrgyzstan uh, and a lot of work with uh, students, um, university students uh, and plugging, uh, if you know what is this, it's like uh, you, you run and uh, uh, pick up the trash uh, so and uh, national uh, SDG contest um, next um, and the local conference of youth in Kyrgyzstan it, it was like first ever uh, in Central Asia it was organized here in Kyrgyzstan um, we covered all um, young people uh, from Kyrgyzstan. Uh, we had uh, three events uh, in three big cities in Kyrgyzstan. So uh, we covered about 500 uh, for sure uh, young people and uh, established the national uh, youth uh, agenda um, to to COI, uh, uh, Conference of Youth um, in Climate Change. So I'm sure that you know about uh, uh, COI. If not, uh, you can uh, text it, it in chat and then I'll uh, tell more about this. So and yeah, next. And then this story uh, rises like, uh, and comes bigger uh, to in regional level. Um, we are here now, uh, we are working with uh, Central Asia Youth. Um, yeah, I'm the part and I was um, national coordinator for the Central Asia Youth for water network uh, yeah you know that water is not only about the water it's about the climate change and uh, other issues so yeah uh, now um, you can see that uh, yeah we also worked uh, uh, with solve climate uh, by 2030 it's uh, also network and we had also first ever <laughs> climate uh, solve climate by 2030 event and Bishkek um, it was online um, yeah that means that it, it, we worked even in COVID times even in pandemic um, so yeah next and then this uh, our regional uh, like 
local conference of youth becomes to the regional conference of youth uh, that will uh, announce or um, publish uh, soon. Um, yeah, and we are open for cooperation and everything. Um, next. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for attention. Here are my um, contacts uh, to LinkedIn and email and Instagram, please. Yes, thank you, Miriam. Uh, our speakers have really great time management. <laughs> So I think they tried to give you a quick snapshot of what the great work they're actually doing. They're very humble, modest, because all these numbers, they're really difficult to do in our region to start, you know, raising awareness first of the people about these issues and then also mobilize them around common goal, which is not easy to do, especially there is lack of materials, resources, information available in local languages. So I really, I'm really proud that our Central Asian region has young people who are trying, doing small steps together, learning about what are climate change and how uh, partnership could help to solve it. So alone universities cannot do much, right? There is partnership you need to establish with local communities, as uh, Sabit said, with private sector in your region. So together you can do more. And they are doing this uh, in collaboration. So thank you so much for your sharing your local knowledge and your contacts. So our members can contact you, learn more, collaborate with you. And returning, yeah, so people are mm, saying nice words in the chat. Thank you so much. And there are some questions for speakers. Okay, so um, the first question from Uzman Zar. Uzman is asking Mirim and Sabit. Can you please tell what is the general support like from university administrators, uh, which they show to help student activi activism in climate change or related fields? How do university administration encourage support your students, young people? So what they do exactly, maybe some examples from your universities. Sure. Am I like clear question? Yes, it's very clear for me. I guess it's being addressed for me. Um, well, first of all, as rector's representative, um, I do work personally with the top management of oil and gas companies. And we, I, I, I've got even their phone number saved on my phone. And every time I text them is literally asking them for sponsorship. And as I said before, what sponsorship could be it's not just money uh, it could be money for organizing an event that's first of all second of all money for um, funding uh, a project a startup a scientific project whatever if it, if it has to do with the SDGs that, that's even better and third of all uh, organizing field trips organizing um, even trips to another countries and, and other conferences. And we don't always ask energy companies for that. Even um, we sometimes we get the funding from the state and it's even better and way, way better when the state encourages to support SDGs, but we use all sorts of kinds of funding that we okay. can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I see this is supporting research yeah, as far as I know, in this climate topic, because there is uh -huh. gap, gap of research in our region, like evidence-based, and also supporting training events, as you said, uh, awareness raising. Thank you, Sabit. Miriam, you wanted to add? Uh, no, I was raising hand to the next question. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, so you're reading chat also. You mean question from Robert, Roberto? Which question? Uh, no, no, from Yolanda. Okay, um, please go, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, thank you. Um, about the progress in the level of youth activism. Uh, yeah, there is a huge, like, even in my 
personal view, there is huge progress in youth activism because, uh, as you can, as you see so much in my uh, slides, that uh, I began from this university level and uh, each year uh, we, I worked with a lot of people, uh, young people, and yeah, that in this time they are coming to me and saying that uh, thank you for doing this. Um, thanks to you, I, I was applied. Uh, I applied to ecological department. Even uh, really, it's real stories, and uh, each year from year to year there is uh, so like uh, much activists in my country that uh, doing uh, even their own projects uh, as there's so like uh, the the climate agenda agenda really arised uh, now um yeah and the young people uh, are our target because in central asia there is a high population of young people so mm -hmm. there is huge potential uh, and we are working on this uh, and it works <laughs> really um yeah and what do you think um yeah yes i, I think uh, i already answered to the next question too that what do you as she's being connected maybe i could ask the question before from the previous question from roberto so mm -hmm. yeah we do have in, uh, encountered in some intergenerational difficulties and as we're speaking i showed you the pictures from the conference we organized the reason why we invite the representatives of the fossil fuel companies and the professionals even young professionals to our university is because the everyone has their own opinion on sdgs and how far we should support them mm -hmm. and especially for example I'm working for one year at the uh, Atrao Oil and Gas Universities. And within the last year, uh, the first time I met one guy, I won't tell you his name, but the first time I met him was like just small talking. Uh, and he is the leader of one of the biggest oil and gas companies in Kazakhstan. We were just small talking, nothing personal, nothing uh, fun, just, just talking. And then the second time we met, we talked a little more about the SDGs. The third time we met, we even argued about the SDGs. The fourth time we met, he gave us a lot of sponsorship. For... <laughs> he <He's> sponsored, <laughs> funded your activity, exactly. right? Exactly. So um, <laughs> what is most importantly uh, is to organize as many events as possible. Yeah. Uh, not just waste all the money on the events they could be also small or meetings like this which don't even need a lot of funding but still yeah. it's very important to talk about these topics to yeah. encourage not only the professionals but also the younger generation to uh, keep an eye on sdgs and maybe mm -hmm. while they seeking for the bachelor thesis or master thesis they should write it on SDGs. Like so. such topic, right. yeah. Right. Absolutely, Sabit, I agree with you because as you said, um, talking about climate topic in a region, country, which is, uh, as we call on the oil needle, you know, like uh, it dependent on fossil fuels for many years, it has been, yeah. And now you're, you're guys trying to start another discussion about how their production impacts uh, communities and climate issues where they are based right and no not many people like such conversation but you're doing it by small talks and small progress 
So I think it's amazing. Also in our region, um, people, young people not interested. It's not popular to enroll in a climate, ecological topics education. People prefer finance, you know, like international relations uh, faculties. So that's also important. As Miriam Sabit said, people start, you know, students start going to such programs, enrolling, uh, or at least writing research uh, like thesis on such topic, dissertation. So I think it's interesting progress for our region, right, in these directions. Okay, so um, there was one question um, from Govshut uh, Turkmenistan. He asks, what kind of recommendations you, you as the young people, I suppose, would recommend for universities, uh, donor organizations, you know, youth organizations, how they can start getting interest of young people into their work, yeah, how they can... Uh, so the young people start caring about climate problems because young people might be thinking about other like unemployment, jobs, you know, there are many, we live in such a um, volatile context at the moment, unfortunately, in our region as well. So how you guys, Sabit Meirim, think what kind of advice you can give to such organizations, projects, universities? So if you don't mind me repeating your question is um, how to support climate supporting organizations? Uh, no, I think it was about how you as a young person like Sabit and Miriam and mm -hmm. people who work in this field, how, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of recommendation you can give to universities, administration, youth serving NGOs, like, you know, projects um to get more interest from young people into climate oh, topic yeah. how to interest them yeah all right so i've got an answer for you um so first of all since i'm working at the university it's way easier for us to do so because the students come here to learn to learn mm. something new. and we've got a lot of teachers and of course first of all we uh, compose their you know, bachelor programs and master programs so they mm. know a lot about SDGs and uh, learn about them on a weekly basis as mm. Uzma said in the chat persistence we do have it not only with the energy companies we do have it also with our students <laughs> whether they mm. like it or not climate is the included question. in their curriculum right it's yeah, Same first of all, it's included in their cur curriculum. Second mm -hmm. of all, we have youth organizations like Miriam said she is uh, part Echo of club. Echo clubs and different clubs. And we've got even other clubs for young professionals, other clubs uh, for old professionals, senior professionals. So still, and exactly on the conferences, they mix up, they mix together, they get the ideas from each other, which is really good. And of course, first of all, so we do uh, let them know about the SDGs mm -hmm. within the lectures. And second of all, we encourage them uh, on our conferences, events, and so on, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, we, mm, I would say not often, but given a chance and funding, we do organize a lot of uh, advertisement between the students and for a competition who provides mm -hmm. less ideas for some projects and give them deadlines as yes, it's like uh, competitions contests competition. hackathons right okay exactly yeah i saw on a photo that you guys do such student uh, hackathons which are popularizing globally they come in groups they solve one issue and get prize funding okay um yeah and miriam has some connection issues so uh I think she was planning to write in the chat, so I think um, people can read later. Uh, so I want to thank you both for joining and sharing your experience and also not giving up because I think that's the most important. I mean, when you care, when you do small steps, in the end, we will do something together, right? For a region, for a planet. So thank you, Sabit Meirum. Uh, 
for speaking today. Yeah, I think you can write your contacts in the chat so people can connect with you, other universities, other students. Uh, this is why we are doing this COP, right? And now uh, I think uh, I will pass the um, floor to Yolanda to talk about our next part of meeting, why we came today. Thank you, Albina. Um, I just want to um, we'll do the next slide, please, Stephanie. If you can. There we go. Thank you. So as a community of practice, um, we have been very active in climate change. And this is a summary of what we have done since January. Uh, just to give you an idea, first, we had a Greening Higher Education um, conference where we had uh, USAID present their um, program on advancing um, climate action. And we had Dr. Christina Kwok, uh, who presented a green skills framework. Then we had a climate change and higher education webinar again, where we had Dr. Um, Bradley Flamp, who's the um, a director of Office of Sustainability at the University of Pennsylvania here in the United States, uh, talk about how the whole university is going towards um, zero carbon emission and how climate change is integrated into um, teaching, learning, research, and so on and so forth. And that event had been wonderfully moderated by Dr. Madina Yunusova, who's um, um, is working at the uh, University of Central Asia. So just, just great um, synergies there. And then uh, we had another webinar that looked at bring together uh, cases from Kenya and the United States on uh, how to respond to climate change th through higher education and Columbia University in New York and Daystar University in Kenya really showed um, clearly what, uh, what they're doing in climate action. It was extremely, extremely rich. So this is just a, a recap of what we've done this year. So today we we this is the, the the last one and we're so you know proud to have Sabit and and, and Miriam with us uh, and we'll add this uh, this webinar to our long list. So thank you. So next, Stephanie. So what we because it, it is a community of practice, right? We want to we wanted to put together a, a tool or product that anyone could use. And um, after consulting with um, the HEAT community members, it, um, it was suggested to us to develop a compilation of what universities in the world do to address climate change and what kind of climate action is taking place. So we started it. It's a, uh, uh, you'll see it's a, uh, it's a matrix. It's an, an Excel. It doesn't look, you know, very, um, very sexy, but it's very rich. And it's taken over 20 universities and looking at um, what they're doing. Because we, we get a lot of questions from you all saying, what are the others doing? What are they doing? and where are they and what's their names and how to contact them so after the um after th this uh, webinar we will send we'll send out an email keep an eye on it and we will be um you know we will be sharing that tool with, with you once you see that tool if you want to add to it if you want to go into that excel sheet and add to it please do so please do so this is going to be very uh very um, informative and this is you know for us as a community so uh thank you so challenge everyone to think of one way to share this resource with someone who could use it so we will circulate the link all right and then um stephanie we have some questions for you from you stephanie can you There we go. So this is a poll that I cannot hear Stephanie, but this is a poll that we would love you to take very quickly just to help us see the next, um, you know, the next steps for, uh, for us as a community of practice. So if you could quickly take it now, that would be, that'd be great. Stephanie, would you like to give more information? 
Sure, I wasn't, I, I didn't uh, realize you wanted me to introduce this, but the idea of this poll is that along with the higher education engagement and transformation community of practice, we're thinking across the full youth power to learning network um, to how this can be as useful as possible to you next year. So answering these questions are a really useful way to help both the HEAT team and the learning network more broadly serve you as well as possible next year. So we'll really, really welcome and invite your input into the, the Zoom poll that should have popped up on your screen. Um, and feel free to respond to that as we're, we're wrapping up today's webinar. Back to you, Yolande. All right, thank you, Stephanie. Um, so this is the uh, the end. We're ending early, but it, it's been a great, uh, great presentation. Again, it is wonderful to have representatives from Central Asia because we um, we don't hear from from you all very often. The uh, higher education um, engagement and transformation community of practice is uh, unfortunately losing Albina for next year. Uh, but we will continue, and I'm sure she will log on when, when we have webinars. Um, but the idea is really uh, to keep going with the network. And please keep an eye on the youthpower.org platform, because it is our key communication platform. Register if you haven't registered at your profile, if you um, haven't done so yet. Um, um, Please tell us how would you like to see this community of practice behave and uh, and what you would like it to do uh, for you in the, the next year, 20, end of 2022 and in 2023. That'd be great. Um, email us anytime, me, Albina, anyone. And if you have questions, just put them in the chat or just come, you know, just unmute yourself and ask questions. And if you don't, we will just do a group picture. Any questions from you? Don't, don't be shy. So you know how to join. All right. So we're asking okay. everyone to come off, to come on video for the group picture, correct? Yes, please. So just hit your video and we can take uh, a good picture and smile. Can we stop sharing screens so we can see everybody? Oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what's going on? All right. Beautiful. Awesome. I got it. Great. Thank you. We good, right, Cole? Yeah. All right. Great. Thank great. you. <laughs> Wonderful. So, well, so, it, it, yeah. Not to do in a hurry, right? As usual. <laughs> yeah, that's very nice not to be stressed. Thank you, Savit. Th th thank you. Well, Miami has left, but thank you so much. It's nice to, uh, to have you on the map now. So we will be in touch for sure. Albina, we're going to miss you. I'm definitely going to miss you. Um, and uh, be well and take care of yourself. And thank you for making this community of practice what it was for the past two years, very rich in, in engagement, networking, and, and promoting climate change in higher education. So thank you all and uh, be well, safe. <laughs>